From Hollywood, time once again for Money TV. I'm Don Belarge, and thanks for joining us. Money TV is a program all about money and what makes it happen. Well, we're living in a period of economic boom. The stock market is doing well. Unemployment is at record lows. Consumers are happily spending money, and in a consumer-driven economy, that's always good news. Jobs are, in fact, so plentiful as a shortage of available employees, and companies with jobs to fill are seeking out those who are employed elsewhere. Skilled American workers have become free agents, so to speak, signing with the highest bidder. But all is not entirely rosy. A recent article in Forbes magazine revealed that 80% of working families are living paycheck to paycheck. Doesn't seem to matter how much is earned either, as many people making $100,000 plus per year live paycheck to paycheck. And in big cities like San Francisco, one can earn as much as $300,000 and still be struggling to make sure the money doesn't run out before the end of the month. Americans finance their homes, their cars, even their educations. But even more disturbing is the fact we seem to be financing our lifestyles. Credit card debt in America is a $1 trillion problem. And in some cases, credit card interest rates are more than those of mortgage, car, and student loans combined. So it's no wonder as we gear up for the next election cycle that many in Washington are embracing socialist policies and a certain segment of the population is listening. Socialist-leaning politicians preach that the government can do a better job managing your budget than you can. Those listening are enticed by promises of free education, free health care, even free income for those unwilling to work. But a society where the government provides your basic needs is no longer a free society. It is a dependent one. Besides, over the past 40 years, the government has hardly set a good financial example in debt to the tune of $22 trillion. Paying that down at $1 million per hour 24 hours per day, 365 days per year, would take 2,500 years to pay off. Think, think about that for a second. And here's something you don't have to think about is our toll-free number because it won't cost you anything from anywhere in the world. You're watching a program, 888-259-4449, to get free information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It is also free, as is the call, 888-259-4449. Visit us at MoneyTV.net. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Well, our first guest is joining us via Skype. Dr. Cindy Orser is the uh, Chief Scientific Officer of DigiPath Incorporated. D-I-G-P is their stock symbol. Dr. Orser, welcome back to the program. Hey, thank you for having me back. Well, I understand that DigiPath had an important IP announcement this week to share with the market. Can you bring us up to date? Yeah, it's been a very significant week, and it's only Thursday. Uh, we are, you know, on this path to continue diversifying our asset holdings in the cannabis space. And in line with that, this week we filed another provisional patent, this time on an application of single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, a molecular-based assay that can distinguish hemp from drug type CBD and drug type THC producing cannabis. And we did this in collaboration with our partners, Vessel, in British Columbia. We're calling the molecular assay True Hemp ID. Wow. Well, Cindy, how do you envision the deployment and application of your True Hemp ID invention? Yeah, well, you know, since legal hemp and cannabis, they look alike and they smell alike, uh, dogs alert to both of them. So it's really caused uh, interstate transport issue now that the under the 2018 Farm Bill that people can transport hemp through across state lines. So it's a problem for law enforcement. And right now, the only way they have to distinguish hemp from uh, drug type CBD or THC cannabis is by taking a sample going to an analytical testing lab and actually extracting the cannabinoids and seeing whether or not uh, the THC content is less than 0.3% on a dry weight basis. So now with the application of our new molecular assay, True Hemp ID, we can identify hemp based on this simple genetic assay. It'll be a very user-friendly portable format that could be used by law enforcement at the site of encountering hemp, whether it's uh, in the field, uh, during harvest, during transport, or processing. Wow, what a game changer. Now, what's your projected timeline for launch of the technology? 
Yeah, so we have a very aggressive timeline to launch this technology. I've already entered into an agreement with a, a, a third party to reduce this to a kit format that we will then immediately validate both in the laboratory in a lab-based kit as well as in the field in a portable kit. And we've also uh, recently gotten access to a international hemp seed bank. Uh, so we'll be able to validate this across international cultivars of hemp. Any competition out there in the same application? You know, while, of course, there has been a flurry of genotyping going on and strain registering or cultivar registering for hemp, uh, we don't really see anything else on the market. Uh, or really, the competition would be submitting a sample for whole plant genotyping, which, of course, takes a few days and is rather expensive. Uh, or, as we mentioned earlier, going through the standard approach of analytical chemistry, where you need access to an analytical lab, you need access to personnel who know what they're doing to run the instrumentation and actually getting a chemical analysis. So we do see this as a real game changer. We're, we're just thrilled because we see this as a solution to what has been an intractable problem to date. Once again, DigiPath Incorporated, DIGP, a remarkable update. Uh, Cindy, thanks so much. Yes, thank you. Joining us now in studio is Riggs Eckleberry. Of course, Riggs is the CEO of Origin Clear, stock symbols OCLN. Always a pleasure, Riggs. Thank you, sir. Well, now, the last couple of weeks, we've had some really fascinating conversations. We've talked about revenue growth. We've talked about sales growth. You've got some more growth to tell us about this week. Yes. So, you know, as we've been announcing, we've been having an expansion of our manufacturer's rep network. Mm. Now that is the, the number one way that water companies get business is from these various manufacturer's okay. reps that carry your line, right? right? Now, to give you an idea how much of a scope we have here, both uh, Modular Water and Progressive Water each started with two rep organizations, sorry, four, uh, so they had eight mm -hmm. in place. Now they're sharing those. We've added 12, wow. which means we now have 20 manufacturers rep organizations that are geographical all over the United States mm -hmm. driving business and that means 70 people on the phone who are excited about modular water. I'm seeing the emails like this is incredible, I love it and they're driving us business. So lots of business coming in, I love it. The next problem is how do you turn around the proposals right. fast enough? These are complex systems. So there's a report from Dan Early, the head of uh, modular water, to update folks on the importance of having a process in place just this afternoon, Rob and I, Rob is the new uh, pre-sales engineer, mm -hmm. Rob and I were able to assemble a proposal for a prospect in South America. We were able to pre uh, prepare it in about an hour. We had our templates in place. It was easy to pick the correct solution. Um, the goal here is to be able to do 90% promotion selling mm -hmm. and 10% designing. And ultimately, we want to get that 10%, as I was saying before, mm -hmm. down to you know, literally less than 1%. Mm -hmm. So that's going well. And the other big factor is that you, uh, a few weeks ago, we had Tom Marchesello on the show. Right. So he's moved in with a vengeance because he knows so much about um, world-class organizations that um, Dan here is saying, I've been working with Tom and some of the mission-critical operational elements that make up our foundation. I'm very pleased with the progress, experience, insight, and intuition that Tom demonstrates and displays. So what he, Tom, is working on is all the process. You know, the, you, you design the systems, then you start, you know, doing mm -hmm. all the purchasing and it all comes together from all the different places and right. built and deployed, invoiced, accounting. There's a massive amount of stuff and we're having to invent it on the fly yeah. because modular water was created really out of nothing. Right. Just Dan Early's expertise, his patents, and his roughly $10 million in, in pipeline that he had. And now it's feeding through, and we're seeing it happen. And I'm saying, thank God, <laughs> because it's living through a, a sale of a water system is incredible. But the good news is, once you overcome the pipeline, the lag, now it's rolling, 
right? And that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing now is deals that were being cut back last fall are now moving through to completion. Mm -hmm. And I've got Tom Marchesello just in time to make it slick. Now, as CEO of this company overseeing this operation, you've seen a meteoric growth of boots on the ground with respect to salespeople, market reps that are talking about your product. I know you're challenged with the uh, idea of delivering the product, but is the management of this overall uh, growth a challenge as well? Well, I've got such a great team. So really all I got to do is just keep you know, feeding, feeding it, um, you know, enabling staff to come on board, uh, enabling software investments and so forth. So I just got to keep you know, putting the, stoking the, okay. the fire, right? That's my job. Okay. But I've got a great team. Bill Charnesky who put the rep team together. Tom Marchesello who's working on the supply chain. Dan Early has got the brilliant systems. You know, uh, Rob who's our new sales guy. These guys are amazing. All I got to do is let them go. That's nice. Now you see with, these, with all these different people, new people on the ground, so to speak, are you getting new kind of feedback from them that you weren't getting previously that you're able to uh, react to? Yes, well, they'll, they'll go, for example, Tom, well, why are we doing something this way? I'm like, well, good question, dude. <laughs> Fix it, right? So uh, a lot of you know, people have been around for a while in the company. Mm -hmm. I think the newcomers are bringing a whole new um, hustle, mm -hmm. you might say. Sure that you know we've been developmental for so long and now to just have this organization just bust out and people who are not shy about giving us their opinions they're doing it and i love it once again origin clear ocln of course talking to the sultan of water riggs eckleberry is also the <laughs> ceo of the company we've got a dozen titles for him Will you stick with us we'll give them to you riggs always a pleasure thank you sir have you heard the news there's only one flat fee news distribution network on the market it's called Access Wire, and it's exclusively from Issuer Direct. Any day, any time, the Access Wire News Network can deliver your press release to more than 1,500 media outlets in 98 countries. Access Wire also delivers real-time engagement analytics. You will learn who read and shared your press release and more. Best news of all, getting started is easy. Visit accesswire.com and extend your company's news reach today. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington. On Shark Tank, we always look for the next big thing. Today, it's digital currencies like Bitcoin. But everyone wants to know, is it real and how do I get started? Yes, it's real. And the best way to start is setting up your free digital wallet with singlepoint.com. They make it easy to buy, use, and store digital currencies without banks or debit and credit cards. Use promo code SING for your free wallet and informative newsletter. That's singlepoint.com. We are back. Thanks for staying with us. Joined now direct from Phoenix, Arizona by Greg Lambert. Greg, of course, is the CEO of Single Point Incorporated. Their stock symbol is S-I-N-G. Greg, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Don. Well, we touched on this last week, Greg. Big news. You had said it was imminent, but you filed your 10K with the SEC. Tell us about that. Well, you know, um, really what's happening out there in, uh, uh, you know, the microcap, um, uh, you, you just need to be fully reporting, and it's not easy. So, you know, we filed our uh, Form 10 in July, and, um, you know, we've had, I guess, four quarters or three quarters of, uh, of filing fully reporting, and we got the 10K done. Uh, it was not easy. I can see why companies uh, don't ever get it done. Uh, but on the good news here, boy, have we ever... Um, been uh, getting uh, a lot of inquiries and a lot of uh, action from uh, some very large institutional investors that now that we've got this 10K done and they see our acquisition strategy are uh, ringing the phones and, and talking to us about large large investments into single point. So um, we're, we're really excited about it. It's interesting because filing of a 10K is really a barometer used by family offices and institutional investors, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I think that, uh, you know, we kept hearing, uh, you know, how hard it was to get this 10K done and, you know, the equivalent of, of actually going public and the paperwork. And, uh, you know, we, we found out that to be true. It's, 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 it's quite a uh, process. And uh, I think that uh, these larger investors, um, you know, when you can show them that, that you can uh, run a public company and, 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 become fully reporting and get that 10K done um, and talk about, um, you know, raising money and acquiring more revenue and, and going on the NASDAQ. I think that's what really excites them. And, 
you know, quite frankly, it, it, it should excite our shareholders what, what Single Point is doing right now. Everything's heading in the right direction. As we stated in the 10K, you know, we went from 250000 in revenue in uh, 2017 to over a million in uh, 2018, almost, uh, I, I believe it was a, a 340% increase. Uh, we expect the same this year. We're, we're um, you know, it's, it's already an 8K uh, public knowledge that we're buying a company called Direct Solar. And um, that is at the auditors. We're, we expect that to close, um, you know, within a week. And, uh, you know, we have the money to, to close that deal. So um, being optimistic, uh, you know, we don't know, but I, I think that that company can do anywhere from five or 10 million in revenue. So um, investors that want to invest in single point and shareholders are taking notice of, of the right direction of, of single point is going. Well, Greg, we've been covering your company for a few years. It's really been energizing and gratifying to witness your growth and progress. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting all kinds of phone calls with different deal flows and, uh, the company financially has, has never been in a better position. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, you know, what we've been working for. Um, and again, you know, the goal here is, is to get up on the NASDAQ and, uh, we, we, you know, we're very optimistic that this year we can not only turn a profit, but, uh, uh, as soon as we get, you know, some of the barometers to get on the NASDAQ, for example, 10 million in revenue, um, I think we're going to start having those discussions. Well, once you have the closing of the direct solar deal in your rearview mirror, I would imagine you have other acquisitions on your radar? Yeah, there is. In fact, um, you know, I can't get into it too much, but we have a LOI in place that we'll uh, uh, hopefully be announcing soon um, on a, um, uh, uh, another company that we want to follow up with another acquisition. Uh, we're in a great spot right now with, with our volume and in the direction we're heading, being fully reporting. Um, we're able to, to raise money um, because the volume of our stock and also we're able to use our stock to buy these companies because they know um, that it's like cash. In six months, they're going to be able to sell those stocks and, and make money. So um, we're in a great position to continue to acquire companies. We've gotten pretty good at it. So now the numbers are just going to be bigger and instead of, uh, you know, acquiring a company for, uh, you know, $3 million, which is what the direct solar is, uh, you know, they're going to start going up to 6 million, hopefully 10 million. And, uh, you know, that's how we're going to build this company to hopefully a 50, hundred million dollar company. Well, if the stock is liquid as it is, it makes the opening conversation and acquisition that much easier, right? Well, that's, that's what happens, you know, a, an owner of, of a company or, you know, the people that control it when, you know, you uh, bring up the fact that, you, you know, you'd like to pay for some of the company with stock. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of times if, if that stock does not move, uh, they, they just say no. But when they grab their attorney and they go look at our stock and they see the volume, um, their attitude is like, yes, we, we will take stock. And, you know, that's part of being a public company. That's, that's what you're supposed to do as a public company. You're supposed to use your stock to acquire companies. And that's exactly what we're doing. Once again, Single Point Incorporated, S-I-N-G. Uh, Greg, congratulations on all that progress. Thanks so much for joining us once again. Yeah, well, keep your eye on Single Point. We're really, we're really moving and shaking right now and things are happening. So, uh, uh, I appreciate all the, the uh, Sing shareholders hanging with us, and uh, go Sing. This is going to be our year. Joining us now direct from Memphis, Tennessee, is Mr. Brian Cox. Brian is the CEO of Surge Holdings Incorporated, their stock symbol is S-U-R-G. Brian, welcome back to the show. Hey, Don. Thanks for having me back. Well, fascinating recent announcement. Surge has partnered to offer free wireless service for low-income communities. Tell us about that. Hey, I'd love to. We're really excited about it. As you know, one of our subsidiaries, True Wireless, has been offering government subsidized service to low income individuals, but it's been limited to the five state area. And there's also a lot of other compliance and regulatory, uh, let's just call it uh, hedges against really growing and, and blowing the, the roof off. So we've been working different ways over the past couple of years. How can we provide a discounted or free service to low income, no credit? underbanked immigrant individuals or people that just want to save money uh, on their phone bill. How can we do this without having a government subsidy? How can we take their actions that they're already doing and monetize them 
So uh, I was introduced to a company about a year ago and we've been working our software and our technology together. And what we've come up with is we're providing the service, they're providing the technology and the ad network, and our customers unlock their phones about 180 to 220 times a day. And on the unlock screen, there's gonna be a non-intrusive ad impression and on the ad impression, we're going to get paid every time that that impression hits the phone. So we're going to take that and subsidize the usage on the phone. And in turn, that customer is going to get free service just for using their phone. So the more they use the phone, the more service they get. So it's a really cool product. And this is going to be a part of our big rollout. This is one of the products that we're rolling out with the ATAC agreement and the 40,000 locations. We'll be rolling out direct online, which is already available right now at searchphone.com. And then we're also, for those folks that already have a phone, whether it be a high-end Android or an iPhone, we've got a SIM starter kit that'll be in peg hooks hanging on convenience stores and corner markets and tiendas around the country. And that's also a part of our ATAC rollout and a part of our organic store growth rollout. Well, that's just fantastic, uh, Brian. How does the service work for the end user? Hey, it works exactly the same. Uh, you know, the, the, the towers, the, the service, there's no, there's no extra equipment or this is not any kind of voice over IP thing where they got to be at home or on Wi-Fi or, you know, a lot of the apps nowadays, you've got to be on Wi-Fi or, uh, or they connect differently and the service quality can sound like a robot. This is the actual real uh, carriers running over the major carriers in the United States. Uh, it's the same quality of service that you and I would use. Uh, so it's, uh, it's the exact same service. So uh, there'll be no discounted service, just discounted pricing. Can you give us more detail how Surge will generate revenue from this deal? Sure. Uh, you know, as I said, it's an ad network. And the way ad networks work, obviously, is it's all based on eyeballs and impressions. Uh, the, the activity that you do on a phone, and people probably don't, a lot of people don't realize this or don't want to know, but a lot of the activities you're already doing are being monetized. The websites you're going, the things that you're doing. So all we're doing is taking some of the top layers of that. Like I said, the, the unlock screen, when someone wakes up their phone, unlocks the screen, there's the non-intrusive ad impression across the top. We get paid for every ad impression. Uh, we're working directly with the ad networks. Uh, they send us the money. We pay the wholesale carrier bills. Uh, you know, everyone's happy. The customer wins. We win. The ad networks win. So, uh, you know, we've essentially created this, uh, this life cycle of a product. Uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd equate it to, you remember before cable TV, you know, NBC, CBS, what have you, you know, you get your, you don't pay to watch those TV shows, but every 15 minutes you watch a couple of commercials. And while this doesn't interrupt your phone service or anything like that, it's equivalent to some of the other apps or what have you that you, uh, you know, you may have an ad impression at the top or the bottom or like some of the games. We do the same thing with the software on your phone. Well, how do you plan to market this, Brian? We're going to be marketing and rolling this out on, uh, I mean, all fronts. Uh, it's already available direct, searchphone.com. Uh, you know, you can go direct anywhere in the country, go direct order it right now. Uh, we're rolling this out into all the corner stores, the tiendas, uh, the markets. We're going to roll it out with our own Androids. And we're also going to roll it out where the customer can bring their own phone, uh, whether it's a high-end phone, low-end phone, doesn't matter. Uh, any Android or you know, uh, iPhone, e-smartphone device, our service will work on. We had previously announced the signing of 40,000 retail locations. Will this service be available through them? Yes, that'll be, you know, you know let me clarify too. Those 40,000 locations are part of one contract and that's rolling out at 3,500 stores a month. That's our projection of rollout. But simultaneously, we also have organic rollouts and then other uh, organizations that we work with and other types of stores as we branch out, not only to those corner markets, but also to uh, Hispanic stores. Uh, that way we can service all low end. It's really about 35 to 40% of the population. How many potential customers are you anticipating? Well, <laughs> you, know, you, you, always put, you always give me the, the good questions toward the end. Uh, we're, we're the initial just placement order for these 40,000 stores is going to be six Androids, and we're looking at between 20 and 25 SIM starter kits. So, I mean, just on our initial placement order, it's going to be the ability to be 800,000 to a million customers. So, obviously, you know, if you ask me, I say we can always slam the gas pedal and there's no limits. Uh, but let's just base it off the starter order, you know, ballpark 900,000 to a million customers, even if we don't get one reorder. 
So, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, where, where that's going to go. Uh, obviously, we have a good feeling that, you know, if I get a service that's, I mean, I'm basically getting it free, I'm going to tell you, you're going to tell the people, whether it's people you, you play ball with or, uh, you know, go to school with, go to church with, whatever, the people that you know, word will get around. So we, we plan to, you know, also create other incentives for referrals. Uh, we've got some really cool um, uh, loyalty points programs uh, that we're going to kick in. So, yeah, we're, we're going at this full force. And Don, like I told you, this is one of the products that we're using to get into these corner stores. But we're also, as we, uh, as the, the corner stores become familiar with our software interface and our platform, they're going to see these other categorical products. Uh, that's a lot of what I'm spending my time on working right now with all these manufacturers, everything from chips to Slim Jims to, uh, I mean, you name it. If it's sold at a convenience store, we want to offer it wholesale, direct to the store, bypass the distributor, uh, and connect them. So, yes, yeah, so this is a product that we're going to use to build their trust build that relationship, become a profit partner with them. And then our goal is to go in and sell them absolutely as many things as we can to that store. We had talked about this on a previous program. Is there any more progress reported in the NASDAQ uplist process? Yes, there is. Uh, there's, uh, the, the notable progress is we're interviewing different types of vendors. You know, as we're, we're stepping up in leagues, if you will, there's different types of vendors. I mean, whether it's, you know, we've got a website overhaul that's underway. Uh, you know, our investor awareness is, uh, you know, is being upgraded and is underway. Uh, you know, interviewing different independent board members and working on the committee setups and all of these check boxes that we're going to need to do to uh, meet the NASDAQ requirements. Those are all full force. We've got a firm that's quarterbacking this for us. So, you know, the, we don't have to walk across the minefield blind. Uh, you know, they're going to help us with all this. And, you know, th that's one great thing about the team that we built and, and, and waiting a year and a half to do this is we've got the troops, we've got the army and the human infrastructure to be able to do all of these operational things and to be able to parse these up and delegate so we can expedite that. And then at the right time, we can push the button and be ready to go up on approval. Once again, Surge Holdings Incorporated, S-U-R-G is their stock symbol. Fabulous update, Brian. Thanks so much for joining us again. Hey, thanks for having me, Don. Have a good day, buddy. And joining us now via Skype is Mr. Warren Wang. Warren is the CEO of ChineseInvestors.com Incorporated, CIIX is their stock symbol. Warren, welcome back to the program. Good morning, Donald. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you back on the show, Warren. Now, I know the company recently was at something called the Vietnam Expo. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, I send you a couple of pictures I want to share to you and uh, your audience, our shareholders. Uh, I think the most exciting thing is we displayed uh, hemp wise uh, in Vietnam Expo, and uh, first day we brought a couple of uh, you know uh, package of the uh, bottle of wines, and uh, a lot of Vietnamese people taste it and they decide to buy. Within an hour, all the hemp wine is gone. So it's very exciting news because I think the Vietnamese in, in consumers love the hemp wine. First of all. They are very close to China, uh, Guangxi province, and they have the same kind of uh, habits using the hemp wine to, to make their life, uh, you know, easy and happy. Uh, secondly, I think all hemp wine is very uh, economic sensitively, uh, you know, price good. Uh, it's, it's good quantity and nice price. So I told my, uh, you know, our CEO Summer, I said, you need a export all the hemp one to Vietnam or Thailand or you know some rest of Asian countries sounds like it's a great opportunity for Chinese CBD biotech uh, companies well that's kind of like that was kind of a great uh, test market for your hemp infused wine then wasn't it yeah uh, also I just want to give an update to our shareholders uh, you know even the price our stock price doesn't you know up and down much uh, we are going to report uh, the third quarter uh, in next Monday or Tuesday. Uh, secondly, uh, we're still uh, making progress into the CBD biotech uh, uh, spin out uh, and then uh, apply for the NASDAQ, uh, I mean, NASDAQ IPO. Uh, still in the progress. Uh, the reason we didn't want to disclose too much because the lawyer said maybe we need to just keep it quiet. Uh, Certainly, our everything business is, is looking to make progress, 
I'm so happy with the with our share. So happy to uh, report it to our shareholders, and uh, you know, appreciate your patience, and uh, hopefully, uh, we have a great run in the next uh, six to twelve months. Well, you've got in front of you one of your CBD products. I think that is a CBD oil. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, that's our latest, uh, you know, high quantity, 48, 50 milligram CBD products. Uh, we did the mathematics. So the people who are using our samples or part of the trial, if they find the CBD is very, very uh, useful, they can buy the purchase large quantity because the more quantity you buy the CBD, the cheaper uh, you acquire that the cost per milligram will be only six to eight cents compared to, you know, you buy 34 bottles, 34 dollars bottles, maybe cost 20 cents per milligram CBD. So we launched the products, everybody love it. We, we just sent out a bunch of uh, over 100, uh, close to, I should say, close to 100 uh, bottles to let a consumer mm. try it first. And then I think after that, there will be a lot of people willing to buy this big quantity because you know, it's uh, it's it's money wise, save us a lot of money, and uh, it's it's it can produce a lot of you know profit margin for Chinese investors. Well, Warren, we've talked before about the passion that you have for the company and what you're doing. It's got to be an exciting time with all these new product rollouts, a pending Nasdaq IPO. It's got to be a really great time to be part of this company. Sure, I just uh, working really hard. Unfortunately, I lost my voice a little bit. You guys may, may now uh, hear my uh, very well. I apologize for that, but uh, we just working hard. Uh, I'm the first one in the office. Uh, hopefully, last one to leave the office. But uh, I'm so excited about what's happening in our company, our uh, financial division and our uh, consumer division. Thank you so much, Donald and everyone. Once again, ChineseInvestors.com Incorporated, CIIX is the stock symbol. Warren, as always, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, on this week's Money Wrap radio program, we're going to decipher whether or not the House actually did approve illegal alien voting rights. For more information or find a radio station near you, go to moneywrap.com. Call us right now, toll free from anywhere in the world, toll free. Again, 888-259-4449 to get free information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It is also free, 888-259-4449. Visit us at MoneyTV.net. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. That's our show this week. As always, we'll be back next week. Thanks so much for joining us.